In today's book review, we got Body Language 101. So what is body language? First off, body language is nonverbal communication. It is the means by which humans and some other animals convey information through conscious or mostly subconscious gestures, bodily movements, or facial expressions. Most people say we communicate with words, but we express so much more through the unspoken language of the body and the face and tonality of voice. Also the gestures such as thumbs up or the wink. Don't know if you guys ever seen the movie I, Robot, but inside of it, he's the robot and he asks Will, Will Smith in the movie, what does this mean? Because you know, it's a human thing. You don't see any animals doing that. The book contains 200 illustrations, the conscious and unconscious body language we use to express our moods, attitudes, and status. Covers the ankles, arms, bodies, cheeks, chest, chin, eyebrows, eyes, eyebrows, eye contact, eyelids, face, fingers, fist, foot, feet, forehead, hair, thumbs, head, hips, knees, legs, lips, mouth, neck, nose, palms, shin, shoulders, temples, thighs, throat, thumbs, tongue, waist, and wrists. So every single body part. So what seems to have three broad uses are conscious replacement for speech, to reinforce speech and to mirror or betray of mood. Proximity, how close are you to someone? The more comfortable they are with you, the closer they'll be around you and the more often they'll try and be around you. Culture is a huge thing. What means one thing in one culture will is completely different in another. So I think the thumbs or pinky up, you know, pinkies up, Squidward and SpongeBob, they do it for fun. But in some languages like Chinese, I think this is giving you the finger. And then in some countries where, you know, you look people in the eyes is a sign of being sincere and polite. Other countries, it's not a good sign at all. So depending on where you're at geographically and culturally, you have to learn their different body language and body cues to make sure you don't offend and do anything crazy. Using your hands and fingers when touching, when separately emphasize what you are saying. So if you know, when you talk, if you move your hands around certain locations and say things, it'll enhance what you're saying greatly. Highly suggest trying to implement that consciously and not just doing that subconsciously when you get really excited and passionate about something. From personal experience, the main things I've paid attention to is the facial expression. So you can tell people's emotions by their face completely. You know, if they're being like real and sincere, you should be able to see it in their face and their smile, their, everything should be lifted up, not just like, you know what I'm saying? Simple things like that. Their tonality of voice. So you can just tell, you can, most people lie when they use their words. You can tell by the way they're saying it, if they're incited, enthusiastic about things versus like, oh, I'm good today, but they're all down and stuff. Uh, are there, is their body language open or closed? So most of the time I see people when they're closed, they either, they don't want anything to do with you. They don't want to talk about something all of a sudden when you say certain words and they close up they cross their legs, that means they're they're not open to what you have to say or you as a person. And when you go like this, you are pretty much covering your vital organs. So like, I guess people say the lungs and the heart, you literally straight cover it and they can't get you at all versus, you know, if someone's open, someone displays their hands behind their back, they're completely vulnerable and opening up to you as a person. Are their feet pointed towards you? So wherever our body is pointed towards for the most part, that's what we're attracted to. So these are things you can pick up. People, most, most people do it. They subconsciously don't try to do it on purpose. So if you notice someone's open, open body language, their feet are pointed towards you, they're most likely attracted to you. Are they displaying or going through their hair? Most people find other people attractive when they're conscious or they do it subconsciously again. They put their hands through their hair. They open up their neck the vital organ, because you know, next one of those important things is if you have a cut neck, you can die pretty fast. So people are, have their neck open, going through their hair, fidgeting. These are things where they find someone else attractive. Are they smiling and giggly? Do they look your way or glancing at your way or staring at you? Are they close in proximity to you all the time? Do they copy your body movements? So a lot of times people that are attracted to you subconsciously, they'll start copying all of your mannerisms they'll start copying your body language you, when you sit a certain way they'll sit a certain way when you move your arm one way they'll do the same exact thing a guy that's married or has a girlfriend might wrap their arms and around the girl or guy who is taken in order to show they have taken them proximity close intimate zone is zero to six inches only a lover a close friend or a relative can go in that zone 
Number two, intimate zone, six inches to one foot and six inches. Personal zone, one foot to six inch, two, four feet. Most people chat with each other in this range. Then you have your social zone, four to 12 feet. And then you have your public zone, 12 feet. Greetings, a Latin American might greet a business person with a hug. Weird for a North American, for your average North American person to do that right away. Shaking hands, a Korean business person schooled to avoid eye contact would per probably feel very uncomfortable. Maintaining space, don't be that guy where there's 10 different uh, urinals and it's just you for a guy if you don't know this. If you're in the bathroom, there's 10 different urinals, there's only you and some other guy. One guy's all the one on end. Don't be that guy who goes all the way to the end and goes to the bathroom right next to someone else. Space it out, maintain space. First impressions, our earliest impression is based chiefly on outward appearance. Partly clothes, hairstyle, but mainly the face and the body. Always look your best. You never know who you're going to run into. Your first impression means everything. It's how you present yourself in front of other people. You know, you should look good all the time, not just when you're around certain people. So I say that with people with your body and your house, your environment, your car space, your workspace. Always have everything presentable that looks nice. Because if it doesn't, that means it's unclean, it doesn't look good, your static energy, you need to do fixing. Of course, once we've gotten to know an individual, we might change our original opinion. People that we thought were unattractive can all of a sudden seem more appealing if we discover that they share our own interests while we physically find some people attractive off the rip. Then they turn out to be rather less interesting or likable when we initially believe when we actually get to know them. Friendly, interest both catching eye contact, approach each other, shaking hands, introduce yourself to the other person as they talk and smile at each other a lot, listen with head nods to encourage others talking, each pay close attention to what the other person is actually saying, mimic each other's body language and attitudes unconsciously, sexual interest would be glancing at another person's crotch, eye contact is huge for something to get to know someone, Prolonged eye contact occurs when there is a heightened feeling or interest between the people talking, feelings of sexual interest. Conversational gazing, normal, friendly, continuous eyes to mouth or in between. An experienced negotiator will look at the eyes, then forehead. Intimate conversation between potential sexual partners, the eyes go from the eyes all the way down to the chest. Uh, goes over our body contact and what they mean, like putting another on the back, ruffling another's hair, pulling punches, handshake two people embracing uh each other's shoulders a shoulder bump that'd be like non-sexual then sexual would be one person striking another person's body sitting next to each other forehead to forehead cheek to cheek holding each other's waist kissing on the lips with their mouth open could be both two people walking hand to hand walking arms linked flinging arms around each other courtship a woman or a man wanting to attract someone of the opposite sex sending out distinct body signals Women tend to give off way more, but often subtler signals. Catch a man's eye and glance away quickly. The meaning is found alluring by men because they feel the signal is a sign of hidden admiration or nervousness because they looked and when you see them, they look away. Looking at a man over a raised shoulder for a longer period of time than they normally look. Tossing her head back, flicking her hair around. Pat a smooth her hair preening gesture that signals attraction to the man, biting the lips unconsciously and imitating the appearance of the female genitals. Show the man the soft skin, palms of her hand, invitation for the man to caress her waist considered an erogenous zone. Fiddling with an object that would be nervousness. Rolling her hips when she walks, stands or sits with legs apart. So again, that's openness body language versus closed. Sitting and stroking the person's thighs. Male courting signals, smothering the hair, straightening the tie, grooming gestures involving the collar, directing a long gaze at a woman unconsciously dilating the pupils when excitement, pointing one or both feet towards the person, sitting with the legs spread apart, showing the crotch. Meeting and parting, they smile, they tilt their head back, open their eyes wide, eyebrows shoot up, waving, handshake. In France and Russia, parting ways, they kiss the cheeks. Some places the guy will kiss the hand of a girl and some places they will rub noses. I think they do that in France. So there's three types of smiling. Simple smile, lips closed, turned up at the corners. Two, upper lip, lips turned up and upper teeth exposed. 
A broad smile, lower and upper teeth show. The smile is broad and usually accompanies a laugh. That's when the most genuine, when you see someone, your eyes light up, your eyebrows go to the sky, and you're just smiling in general. Mimicking two people unconsciously, people will mimic each other's postures and gestures to show that they agree on what is being discussed. Deliberately mimicking another person, where if you're consciously aware in the moment, uh, people's postures, it can make you seem more friendly. Uh, and most skillful people do that, especially salespeople, because they know it works. It'll make if you copy, you know, what you're doing to someone else, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to be relaxed because just like when someone shares their similar interests, when they copy your body language, you're going to feel more relaxed because you're seeing yourself and the other person. Showing interest subconsciously, blink rate. When people see something fascinating, their blink rate tends to speed up. People that are really interested will have their health tilted to the side. Rejection half turns the body in the head away, assumes blank expression, puts hand on the mouth pretending to yawn, turns away, walks off. Impatience, drumming the fingers, foot fidgeting, slapping the thigh. Unconscious defensive actions, arms crossed, gripped arms crossed, crossed knees standing, shins crossed, ankles crossed, and foot locked standing. A real smile is of certain strength, grows to full of strength, lasts for the correct amount of time according to its strength, symmetrical, affects the rest of the face. A false smile may be incorrect strength, appear for too quickly or too slowly, fails to last the right amount of time, asymmetrical, and doesn't affect the other parts of the face. So that is a lot. Some of the things I don't even use, but a lot of them are simply knowing when people's body language is closed off, when their hands and arms are like this, when their feet or legs are crossed versus when they're open. Pay attention to the vibes that people give off in general. It's not too, too hard, but the more, again, more practice you put in, the more you become aware and you just build on and get better and better at reading these things. So you don't even need to, for me, I don't even need to listen to the words I hear. I just pay attention to the, the vibes people give off, the energy they give off with their tonality of voice and then their simple body language. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Other than that, extra boy, have a good day and peace out.